Hey everybody, this is Travis Miguel of the band Atreyu and you're listening to Interview, Interview Under Fire. <laughs> All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Interview Under Fire. This is your host, Sonny, this time, along with Travis Miguel, quite the honor, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining our IUF series today. You know, Travis, this is an exciting time of the year for you and the rest of the guys over at the Mighty Atreyu with the release of your eighth studio album. I can't believe I've been saying that number. Uh, Baptize drops June 4th on Spine Farm. Now, first things first, you know, I want to congratulate you on all the well-deserved recognition has been getting so far, especially with those singles, Save Us, uh, Warrior, Underrated. So much to discover about this headbanger of an album. But before we get to all that and beyond, I know we briefly discussed it before the interview started. How are you? I think that's a simple question, but important one to ask considering what's been happening in our lives as of late. How's life in California, man? Uh, life in California is, I mean, right now it's so far so good. You know, um, we seem to be slowly but surely digging our way out of this whole pandemic mess. Um, yeah. like I just, I literally just got my first, uh, vaccination shot the other day. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm hoping at least that the worst is over and we're on to uh, greener pastures as they say. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen the news here in Texas. Everything's kind of just flipped on its head over here. <laughs> they opened everything right. back up and who knows how things may look like two weeks from now. I mean, yeah, things are opening. I think we're on the other side of it. At least uh, the worst is over. I mean, knock on wood, I'm, I'm scheduled to get my first vaccination. Well, I'm going to make sure my parents get it first and then I'll get mine uh, towards the summer. But, you know, I want to wind the clock back just a little bit, Travis, because for the fans and listeners who may not know, you guys have recently went through a lineup change from where your previous vocalist, Alex, recently departed to the point where your drummer, Brandon, uh, we'll be taking over Helm as front man. If you could just briefly talk about how easy or difficult that transition went for you all, because the chemistry on Baptize, I mean, it's uncanny and so precise. Yeah, um, the the transition was actually very, very smooth. Um, oddly enough, um, and obviously before the pandemic, we did a tour in Europe uh, it was about a year and a half ago, and um, Alex had unfortunately injured his back, and wow, yeah. he he wouldn't have been able to you know sit on a plane for twelve plus hours to fly to Europe, play shows, and then fly back. <clears throat> so we had to think of something really quick. So um, we got our buddy Kyle Rosa to fill in on drums, and Brandon took the front man spot on that tour. So it was almost like. Um, kind of like a trial run and we didn't even know it <laughs> at the time. Yeah. So, and it, it worked out famously, everything, everything went, was great. So um, yeah, because of that, it was, you know, the whole transition was very, very seamless. Yeah. And then of course your guitarist Porter took over the harsh vocals. I think it, like you said, and now that you mentioned it, it does, it does seem like it was pretty easy because you guys all knew each other and, and the time frame from where it started to where it is now. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, life as of late, you know, we talked about this, you know, many of us have also been away from the stage a lot, you know, fans and musicians like, but Travis, how are you keeping up your, you know, chops these days? Is that affecting your musicianship? Has anything changed for you routine wise lately, if at all? If anything, I'm playing more guitar now than before. I mean, because I've got, I literally have nothing but time on my hands. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been playing guitar a lot. Um, I actually, I wrote a whole album for my other project, which is called Fake Figures uh, during the, you know, the pandemic downtime or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been somewhat busy, you know, uh, just try, I mean, just trying to stay busy just so I can stay sane. Because, yeah. you know, when the, the lockdown first happened, you know, it was, um, you know, don't, don't go out. If you do go out socially distance, you know, just, you know, shelter in place basically. And for me, I was just like, well, no problem. That's like a normal Tuesday for me. Um, but then after a few weeks of that, I got old pretty quick. Um, so yeah, thankfully I've been able to, you know, keep myself and my brain somewhat busy just to stay sane. 
Yeah. I don't know if it, I think you kind of just summarized my whole experience too. Like the first, at least for the first two months of the pandemic, it was nice at first because you were able to actually tell yourself, yeah, I can actually catch up on all the things I missed out on, like do some housekeeping duties, whatever it is in between. And then I don't know, like three, four months in, I'm like, okay, I, I can't keep doing this. I got to find a way to stay productive. And, you know, before this whole lockdown, you know, uh, I don't know what it was for you. You know, I was at a show every week. I'm sure it was the same thing for you, you guys staying busy, like traveling and touring. And, you know, Atreyu has been around since what, 98, and you've been at this for over two decades, Travis. And I wanted to ask, how was the touring life and the live music experience for you personally? Because you've done some extensive touring throughout your career and brought on a handful of sold out, you know, headlining tours, including Ozfest, uh, Download Festival. I remember seeing you guys at Mayhem festival what uh, 2010 i believe and yeah, yeah and you guys have also shared the stages with lincoln park you know avenge sevenfold deftone slipknot i mean that list goes on and now we've all been kind of just forced to take an unexpected step back and does it make you have a growing appreciation of the touring life for sure yeah um i mean this has been the longest break that we've had in a long while i mean and we're not the only ones obviously i mean everybody right every band and artist under the sun has had to go through this. Um, And, you know, the the saying is true, you know, you you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, we're once everything kind of mellows out and stuff starts to normalize whenever that may be, um, we're definitely going to be, I mean, we're looking forward to it now, you know, just getting on a stage and playing in front of actual people. Um, we did the live stream thing, which was really, really cool. Um, yeah, I think it was Carry the Fire. I know that was right. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, we did that back in uh, November, late November, early December. We did two live streams. Uh, and it was really, really cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, but it's obviously not the same as playing an actual show in front of people. You know, just that live show experience. It, it's not there, yeah. you know? Um, but luckily, you know, obviously with the technology we have today, we can do stuff like live streams and, you know, Zoom interviews and yeah. stuff like that. I'm so, a Zoom pro now. It's it's crazy yeah, how many yeah. of these I've done. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have definitely over the past year have been, I've just kind of uh, learned how to adapt to this whole way of doing stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward and, we're all pretty much just um, waiting with bated breath to hit the stage again. Yeah. Like all of us, you know, uh, do you ever have, I mean, do you ever have a chance to, I don't know, uh, YouTube, just videos of a tray of you guys playing live. Do you ever do that yourself? Like now that it's been this long that you're staying at home. I was wondering about that. <laughs> I, I personally don't because I, I hate seeing myself on screen because <laughs> I know, I'll, I know how I'll, that feels, <laughs> you know, and, I hate hearing my own voice. So um, every once in a while, maybe, but for the most part, I, <laughs> I kind of try to steer clear of it. <laughs> I understand what you mean. You know, you set this up for me perfectly because a very uh, commonality on Interview on the Fire, I'm sure with a lot of other publications and with the live streaming, you touched on uh, briefly. And we've had bands like, you know, August Burns Red on the show, uh, Lamb of God, a, a, a handful of mounts. So they talked about um, selling virtual tickets to the fans and then, uh, pre-recording a show or live streaming a show and they would they would stream it and uh, there's no wrong answer to what i'm about to ask but i wanted to get your take on it travis considering the amount of touring you've done the bands you've met the, the collaborations you have the people you met the fans you know do you, do you think that the rise of the quarantine induced live streaming we're seeing right now from all these bands even yourself is that going to affect the touring musician business going forward through your perspective like has it already been affected do you still see bands doing something like this even after all this is completely over um i i mean the live stream thing when when bands first started to do it it was a really cool thing um it was you know literally the next best thing to go to an actual live show but i think and i i don't know i could be wrong but i kind of think the idea of the live stream um or the popularity of it might be waning a little bit because you know every band has had to do it Mm -hmm. and so it's you know like i said it's just not the same thing as going to a show 
that whole experience, like, li- I mean, I'm talking like literally getting in your car and, you know, going to pick up your friends on the way, rolling into the show, paying for parking, going through security, going to get a beer, checking out the merch. Maybe you run into somebody, you know, you hang out with your buddies or your friends. Uh, you might get in the pit a little bit. Um, not me because I'm way too old for that. Um, I may go back into the pit, even though I'm old, right. considering how far back, you know, how far, you know, I mean, we, yeah, we, it feels like we're, you're, we're so removed from that experience, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm sure there will be some kind of um, events that bands will put on that are, you know, of the live stream ilk, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for the most part, most bands want to get out there and, you know, do it for real. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, Metallica did this live streaming event. What is it? Last summer, I believe for one weekend, they did this uh, live streaming at the drive-ins around uh, the States. And right, right, uh, right. yeah, so uh, my friend here in Dallas, he had a ticket. Dallas sold out immediately, by the way, like there was no way to get in. Like after the first 24 hours, it was on, it was being sold. My friend had a ticket. I'm like, sure, I'll go. And uh, I kid you not, that was actually my first Metallica experience. I mean, if you would have told me I would have seen Metallica during a pandemic, I would think you're losing your mind, but can't make this stuff up. I right. get there. And what's the most, what's the most, you know, popular thing we hear? One of the more popular things we hear at like a, a, a hard rock, heavy metal show. Let me see those horns, right? You just see a sea of horns uh, for the fans and you get that adrenaline rush when you're on stage. Instead, what do we get? And three days grace open. I remember they said, uh, let me hear you honk your horns. So if you just roll your window down, you just hear cars honking just in silence in the night. It felt <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that it just made me miss that live experience even more. Yeah. You, that experience on driving in with your friends and getting the ticket. The turnout was great. But once you actually sat down, da- sat down <laughs> in your car and watched the show, it was just, man, uh, it, yeah, it, it really makes me appreciate the old days, which was what a year and a half ago. And of course there's that Liberty to mosh in your own room. You can always do that, but how much longer (laughs) can you do that for? You talked about live streaming and then there's that barrier where how much more creative can you get? So um, you nailed it right on the head, Travis. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer to what you just said, but there's always that uncertainty going forward. Like I said, we're on the other side of things. So who knows how things will look like three, four months down the road. So, um, but yeah, you said it well now. Uh, we covered everything from head to toe. Let's talk about Baptize. Uh, that eighth album comes out June 4th on Spine Farm. Now, uh, this is a follow-up to 2018's In Our Wake. Now, the name Baptize, I feel like it's in the name, new lineup, new chapter in that same sense for you too, or is it just me? No, you are pretty much exactly right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a new decade. We have a new lineup. This is a new album. Um Dan Jacobs, our other guitar player, and myself got new guitars. So it's like, it's kind of like a, it's like being born again or like a rebirth for the yeah. band, you know. Um, you know, we're basically just saying, you know, we're we're not going anywhere. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, from uh, speaking of that, start to finish, uh, if I may, Travis, I'm going to briefly summarize this because I have to get this out there. I'm going to lose my mind. Countless amounts of memorable riffs, hooks, melodies just every song stood out on their own it's very anthemic i don't know if that even that's a word but it was just a blend of melodic thrash and you know hardcore punk and dare i say um i hear this name a lot new wave of swedish death metal in there uh, uh there's that element you know from the title track to underrated to weed which is my personal favorite catastrophe all the way to warrior you guys have done it again you know you, of course you have two of your albums that already went certified gold and this is just another impressive addition to your catalog um anyway i'm gonna stop talking right now i feel like i'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna be able to stop myself if i go any further but walk me through this travis how much did things change from when you first started composing on baptize to where you ended up finishing it did a lot change in between did nothing change in between was there already a specific sound you knew you wanted with this album there what a question no, i know <laughs> no the, i mean there was no we didn't have any kind of real preconceived notion of what the album was going to sound like or what kind of vibe it was going to have. And I don't think we really ever okay. have done that with any album we've ever recorded. Um, and for me, whenever we go into uh, write and track an album, it 
kind of tends to be a blur for me because there's just you're just so focused on the task at hand it's almost like the outside world doesn't work or doesn't exist um and then once all is kind of finally said and done i'm just like what the hell just happened <laughs> you know like oh, okay we have an album like i don't remember a whole lot of i mean i know i was there and i know i was like present and working but after the fact it's just kind of it just ends up being a blur um so uh, yeah i don't i almost i honestly don't know how to answer <laughs> that uh, actually that that counts as an answer i mean it shows how fast time can fly when you're writing new material and it's impactful for someone like me, for people that don't know, because, you know, Atreya has had a very positive impact for me growing up. And uh, uh, it's a testament to everything that you've talked about. Now, as far as like the production, good God, it was so polished. I'm kind of an audiophile these days. Um, I'm very picky on how I want to listen to the music and and the way I want to listen to it. Now, as far as like, you know, the production, you guys did work with uh, uh, John Feldman. And we all know his work with the legendary Goldfinger over the years. He's also worked with Escape to Fate. Bleak 182, 311, The Used. He also, he also worked on your last album, is that correct? Yeah, he yeah. did uh, In Our Wake, and he also did, uh, we have an album called Let's Sales Paper Anchor. Right, uh, right. Uh, which was 2007, 2008. Yeah, uh, that actually is my personal favorite, the, the irony of that. Uh, but I want to talk about him, you know, John. Um, I'm sure there was a sense of comfortability in the studio for you, Travis, knowing that you have someone like John again working on a record with you like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, John is, it's almost, it's like, he's like the Energizer Bunny. Like <laughs> after being in Just a room- Just give him the drum and then the- <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> After being in a room with him for like an hour, I'm just exhausted. Like not in a bad way. <laughs> right, right. Because he's just got so much energy and he's just, he's always just bouncing around all over the place. It's almost, it's kind of inspiring. And he's like, he's got like a good, you know, nine or 10 years on me and I'm the old guy in the <laughs> band. So yeah, to see him, you know, just so lively and so stoked and, you know, um, so uh, he's just raring to go to make music it's um it's definitely inspiring yeah and uh i want to throw a few more names out at you we talked about john uh jacoby shaddix uh travis barker matt heafy you collaborated with every single one of these talented individuals you know uh, i was wondering you know what is that experience like bringing in you know other artists from their respective music fields into your world of baptize did it make the process that much easier uh i don't know if it made it easier or hard it wasn't necessarily a matter of um, how difficult things were. It was just kind of, you know, when you bring in, uh, you know, bring in somebody to do a guest spot or mm -hmm. something, it, it just adds another color or flavor to the music that obviously isn't normally there. Um, so with the song Warrior, we had this kind of extended middle part and we wanted, you know, kind of like a, uh, college football, almost like, you know, marching drum line type of thing. And so we needed somebody. Anthemic, just, just there, like yeah, I said. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so we were like, well, who can we get to do marching drums on this? Well, let's just get one of the most famous drummers on earth, Travis Barker. Um, because, and it worked out in the because uh, Travis Barker is practically neighbors with John Feldman. Okay. Yeah, that um, worked perfectly. And Travis actually, he also works out of uh, Feldman's studio quite a bit. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Uh, Feldman just hit him up and said, hey, come down here and just lay this thing down real quick. And uh, he killed it. It totally added to the song. You know, um, same thing with uh, Jacoby Shaddix. It was, you know, well, let's get, you know, the this the song that Jacoby's on um, is a very, again, it's very anthemic. Um, it's a, um, you could, you could definitely hear it at like any sporting event, you know? And so the song was written and we attract it and it just kind of 
screamed him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. And um, we're uh, somewhat, fr- you know, familiar with those dudes personally as well. So, uh, yeah, same thing. Jacoby just came down to Feldman's and just laid it down. Came out great. Um, and uh, Matt Heafy from Trivium, obviously. I mean, we've been friends with those guys for better part of a decade, if not longer. Yeah. Um, kept in touch with those dudes as well. And Matt was more than happy to lend his voice to uh, one of the tracks. So yeah, it all worked out really well. Yeah. And I think it's really amazing. Just shows the, uh, the camaraderie, I think uh, for lack of a better term between you and, and those musicians, it's almost like you guys kind of start out, out in the same years, like early two thousands era. And just now you guys are here and still making the amazing music that you're making. And uh, of course I wouldn't be here today without the music that you guys put out. So I, I think that really shows that amongst yourselves and there was also another song. I think the same thing can be said for, what is it? Aaron Gillespie and M, M Shadows. What was that song you guys did last year? Um, uh, Superhero. Yeah, yeah. From from uh, from from the last album, which was right. which was also an amazing song. I love that music video you guys put out as well. Now, between writing and structuring the songs and the production process, like you briefly just talked about, the lyricism throughout Baptize, I wonder what it can mean. Because you have a song like Save Us, which is a call, call to action to light the fire within ourselves you know we be about making a great change but only if we look inside first then you have a song like warrior which is a song about persistence and never giving up and then you have a song like underrated which is about never being handed anything and not taking any shortcuts no easy way so to speak so i wonder you know to what level do you guys like to have a theme for your music if there was one and how important are themes to you travis as far i mean i don't think we really dwell on it too much as far as like uh, as far as themes go it almost just kind of a lot of the time it's um very circumstantial it can be somebody's going through this in their life good or bad whatever it may be Mm -hmm. how are they reacting to it how would i react to it you know um it's mostly just based on um stuff that's going on in the world today um again like you know stuff that we've either some of us have been through or stuff that we know other people have been through um and it kind of uh um you know i mean everybody goes through a certain amount of shit (laughs) in their life again whether it's good or bad so um yeah i think it, it kind of uh like you know a lot of the lyrics anybody can relate to them really in some way shape or form yeah, I, I'm sure. Was it more like a go with the flow type of attitude when writing the songs, or was it just like maybe it wasn't a theme beforehand, right? Like you guys just kind of just yeah, let's just go with this what we know and then do it that way. For the most part, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes there's stuff that just comes out of out of left field that none of us saw coming, you know. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, when we walk into the studio, a lot of the times we have no idea what's going to come out. Um, if anything's going to come out or if too much stuff is going to come out, you know, that's, I think that's a good thing actually. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it keeps, you know, it keeps us on our toes, keeps us guessing, you know, we're, it, um, it keeps us, it keeps everything interesting for us. You know, we're not it, going into the studio day after day after day. It can get kind of monotonous and, you know, groundhog day, if you will. But, um, yeah. um but yeah, it, that the cool part about it is that we, we don't know what's going to happen. Would it be safe to say that you see baptized as a snapshot of where you are in a certain time in your life looking back? Pretty much. I mean, I think every album is a snapshot of where we are um, at that moment in time. Um, And I think it's like that for a lot of bands, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. if we were still writing songs, like we were in our early twenties, again, every song would be about being stabbed in the back or how some girl broke our heart or, you know, (laughs) <laughs> you got it's all, it's all the typical stuff we grow up with you know you gotta right. write about that <laughs> yeah and you know after after you know we all grow up as as human beings and and as musicians and it's going to come through in the music you know from the different experiences and perspectives and your timeline that you have taken in which you've discussed about so far you know whether it's going top 10 in the billboard 200 or having your albums go certified as gold 
playing as long as you have and the people you've met and work with during these amazing records, including the multiple touring cycles you headlined and your band, the name of Trey, you know, it's a household name these days. You know, what is the most rewarding part for someone like you, Travis, who is now at this point in their career at the same time has been involved with so many other different aforementioned talented bands, artists, individuals throughout that timeline. Do you ever stop to take a look back at how far you've come? Yeah, all the time. Um, if you had told me when I was, you know, 21, 22, that I'd be doing this now that I'm in my forties, I probably would have laughed in your face, you know, yeah. because even at a young age, I was very much a realist, you know, like the, the idea of quote unquote, making it was just, it was just so far removed from me. It was just wasn't on my radar because stuff like that just doesn't happen to a guy like me. You know, um, and, and here I thought, you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here I am. I, you know, I thought we'd get signed, uh, record an album, go on a couple tours, and then go back to uh, work or go back to school. Um, but it, you know, obviously, it didn't pan out that way. So the fact, the fact that we've been able to do this for as long as we have at the level that we have, um, you know, I'm, it's not lost on any of us how lucky and fortunate we are as a band because you know 20 years as a band that's you know some bands don't make it past that's not three, an easy thing to do exactly yeah um so yeah i mean we definitely strive for longevity because you know none of us want to get real jobs <laughs> i can relate to that i think it's you know uh everything you talked about i feel like it's easy to lose track of yourself the more and more successful you are it's it is important to I don't know who I speak for here, but I think it's important to kind of just push everything back and take a look at, look at it on the outside before you go back into it. Just kind of remind yourself, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. Do it this way. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it's just, I, I still have to kind of like pinch myself mm -hmm. and remind myself uh, how lucky I am to be doing this. And when I, do do that i'm just like my mind is blown yeah you know, it's like it's like i won the lottery you know um because you know like i said my my expectations weren't all that high because it just you know especially back then playing the type of music that we were playing you know it wasn't exactly mainstream or anything like that um and uh to be you know uh part to be part of like a the um the birth of a you know like the whole like metal like core the, thing. Uh, yeah like the early 2000s like and i don't i sound like a broken record but you talked about those collaboration with like trivium and Papa Roach, of course it's that era you know the birth of that so so-called era like we both came from it and here we are right uh, yeah. yeah but so i you, think no go ahead go ahead no i was just saying yeah i mean it's just Sometimes I, I literally just have to laugh. Like I, I can't believe I get to do this. Yeah. And it also shows dedication to your craft uh, with everything you've done. Case in point, why am I here for ex 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 everything that you've done? Now, uh, I said we were going to, we talked about everything. This has been such an honor. Okay. Now we're going to get to that fun part. I was going to ask if you want, want to do this. And I do this with a lot of my guests. It always throws them off. It's, it's a fun thing that I like to do to finish things off here. What I'm going to do, Draft, is I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Hot seat. All right. I'm going to see if you know the lyrics to your own songs. Are you up for that challenge? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a feeling I'm going to fail miserably. Here's the thing. I, I can't tell you how many times I get told that. I did this with Corey from Trivium, and he said the same thing. He got every single song right. And Trivium, you know, their discography is endless and they just put out an album last year but it's always funny like i've had artists who say oh i'm not going to get every song they get every song right right and then they say i will get every song and they get every song wrong <laughs> <laughs> so i just handpicked a few i'm gonna start you off easy i'm gonna read a lyric and you just tell me what song is from which is interesting because it's different when you know uh, you have a vocalist deliver the lyrics in a certain perspective as opposed to someone like me if i just read it it sounds exactly like poetry. I was going through these lyrics. I'm like, wow, it's ex it sounds exactly like that. So here we go. Put my head in the fire. Flames go higher and higher. Let's all burn in the agony. Tonight will be tragedy. Oh, um, that's 
underrated, right? Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, wait, I started off easy, right? Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, that's, it, it, that's underrated. <laughs> it's a recent song, so it's still somewhat fresh in my mind, but if you go okay. like pre-2008, I'm probably gonna fail. <laughs> Okay, well, this next one is, I think it's around that era, but you did name this album uh, earlier in the interview. This is actually a very popular song. This actually uh, pertains to me a lot, actually. Back and forth, the struggle consumes us all, trying to keep a level head in the most unsettling of times. Today, I'll... The next lyric is the song title. The lyric is become the bull. Yeah. <laughs> the song is becoming the whole yeah i remember when i first heard it on madden i couldn't even believe that <laughs> it was just it, it's it takes me way back like i said seeing albums as snapshots in a certain time in your life i see the same way with your records at least from, from a fan's perspective and a journalist's perspective i think that's very important yeah all right we're gonna move forward here i'm so tired but i won't stop moving fearful my humanity is running away I'm not foolish. I won't stop dreaming. I know I can be better than I am today. The pressure builds and I'm... This is another one where it, the next next lyric pertains to the title. Oh, man. Think 2015. Okay, so it's long live. Yep. I had a feeling it was long live. Oh, man. You want to read it again? <laughs> I, I got nothing. Start, start to break. Uh, starting to break uh, was that next line, but start to break. It's I, all right. That's good. I, if anything, I, hey, I Travis, that. if anything, I'm making you rethink your set list when you guys come back to Dallas, all right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, now here's a very popular one, at least from what I've heard. You know this. And it pulses through the desire to change, the desire to deconstruct all of my past failings. But where to begin? Because when you live in sin, it's hard to look at saints without them. Man, it's just like poetry, just reading that. This is a throwback. Okay. This is, is this, okay, uh, I'll help you out here, 2004. Okay, so, curse. Mm-hmm. Read the lyric again. And it pulses through the desire to change, the desire to deconstruct all of my past failings. But where to begin, because you, when you live in sin, it's hard to look at saints without them. All, I mean, all the Atreyu fans listening and watching this are probably just <laughs> clowning me right now. I think it also shows the growth and the musicality of the lyrics. If I were to read something from now as opposed to reading something yeah. from before, it really shows that. It really shows the diversity of that, which is, I think, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, dude, I have no clue. What song is that? <laughs> the, the Crimson. <laughs> is it? Yeah. God. <laughs> See, gonna, I, mean, I, I, I have a feeling you're going to go back and listen to that after this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you see, I, I, I'm the guitar player, so I'm focusing on six strings. And yeah, try, yeah, try totally to understand. Up. I, I wonder if it would be more challenging if I were to ask your new vocalist now, see if he would actually be able to recall that. That's always something to think about. But uh, I, He would definitely do better than me. <laughs> we'll put that to the test when you guys come back to Dallas. We'll do another one. Um, all right, moving on. This is, okay, this is a lot more recent, so I'm going to uh, make it easy here. Here at the starting line, never ending race. What I've got inside is a commonplace. I've been dreaming about hope for better days. Time for dreaming's done. Time to face the sun. I love that line. That's uh, time is now. Yep, from in our wake. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you knew this song was coming, this next one. I, at least I hope you knew this song was coming. <laughs> you fell upon me like a plague. Weakness, sweet weakness. But I digress. After all this, you're just like all the rest. Uh, oh my god, it's at the tip of my Okay, tongue. it's, it's, uh, if I'm doing this, do you know? Oh, X's and O's. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> a death grip on yesterday. Yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have needed, <laughs> I shouldn't have even needed a hint for that, because, I mean, we've pretty much played it at every show for the past <laughs> 15 years. God, I suck. It's all right, it's all right. It, it, it's, again, again, it. It just shows the growth of the musicality. It shows how uh, diverse your own entire catalog is. You're you're doing better than a lot of musicians. So okay, let's, let's do that. Okay, as long as as long as I'm not the worst. <laughs> no, you're not. I had some words, and it, I get a kick out of those every time when I hear it. Okay, got a couple more. Knives out, we bare our teeth. Strength and pain are what rules the world. End of, end of days, we're we're racing to red lights. Does that make sense to anyone else? I can't even talk right now. <laughs> anyway. 
That's 09. Okay, so that's um, Congregation of the Damned, mm -hmm. right? That album? Yeah. What is, the, what is the lyric again? It is, uh, it is, I think this was the last album before you guys had that gap. Right. Um, Knives out, we bare our teeth, strength and pain are what rules the world, end of days, and we're racing to red lights. Does that make sense to anyone else? I don't know. That's ravenous. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Ugh. Last one. Okay, this okay. is the last this is the last one. This is way back. I have not called out this album yet, so that should be a hint. Okay. Um I wonder if I should give you any more hints. No, let me try it. I watched my aspirations crashing to the ground on the backs of the angels that I've slain, but I meant so well, I tried so hard, gave everything in my soul to what end, to what end, desolation, desire, exhale, pass away. Um, that's, is that, that's not a song for the optimist. No? Yeah, that is. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, you got it. That was the first song on Suicide Notes and Butterfly Faces. That was okay. great, man. You did great, actually. Uh, the fact that you got that song, that 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 hits me hard right here. That was great. That was, that was what, four for eight? That that was, was that four for eight? No, I think you did better than that. Because okay. I think you got at least all the albums correctly. Um, something you don't know, I'm going to tell it right now while we're on the air why we call ourselves interview under fire let's say you and the boys came to dallas and if it's you and brandon or even dan who wanted to do this we would give you chicken wings and with each lyric we would go a hot sauce level higher if you didn't get the lyric right oh god See? so now you know so now you know why we call ourselves that okay. uh, we got to the point where we can't give like brandon uh hot wings and he has to go up there and sing so right we're, right we're right thinking right. about bringing it back <laughs> yeah i i mean i'm a huge wuss when it comes to spicy <laughs> stuff like I like a little bit of a kick, but if I'm like, if my lips are going numb and I'm just in a flop sweat, <laughs> just because I'm eating something, I'm kind of bummed. For the record, I'm in my thirties. I can totally relate. I can't eat that stuff anymore, but it got to the point where I remember we had Doyle from the Misfits on their show and he said, Hey, I'll do it. If you guys have vegan cauliflower wings, cause he's vegan. Right. So that's always an option. So now, you know why we call ourselves that. Uh, so I would, uh, let's stay in touch when you guys do come back in Dallas, but uh, Travis, this has been such an honor, man. Do you have any last words, any shout outs, anything you'd like to plug in as far as a tray you and baptize or even your side project uh, before we finish things off here? Uh, yeah, I have a side project called fake figures. Uh, we have three EPs out. Um, oh, nice. You can okay. check it out on Spotify, Apple, all the streaming sites. Um, and we will have a full length album out. I don't know when uh, we're trying to figure all that stuff out right now. Um, hope hopefully before next year, but I'm assuming it'll be probably 2022. Man, talk about getting back in the swing of things. That'd be a great thing to release once everything's over, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, just thank you to all the fans. And uh, everyone who's listening, uh, if you can, buy Baptize. Comes out June 4th on Spine Farm Records. And you know the bands can't do it without your help. I know it's an easier said than done request. But it's a very simple request. I still buy records that's uh, in the corner of my room these days. I, mean, I still buy them. You know, I, I love how the physical format is something that I will always stick to no matter how. Yeah, everything's digitized these days, of course. But no, yeah, uh, I, I totally miss, you know, the physical aspect. You know, when I was a kid mm -hmm. going to get a CD, I would just, you know, open it up, start playing and just analyze every little thing in the artwork and read the liner notes and the bands they thanked or what gear they're using all that stuff and um i i definitely miss that do you remember that do you remember uh blockbuster music when they had that uh when a new album would come out they had that a uh, section where you go to the store and you put on the headphones yep you could yep. listen to a sample they had like different boots yeah. just just things like that we're talking about i mean people like us where we are at its point in our life but uh we grew up on that but anyway i know yeah. that's off topic but that's something to point out how important this stuff is to us but um, this, everyone, this is Travis Miguel from Atreyu. Baptized comes out June 4th on Spine Farm. Don't forget, you can listen to this podcast on every major podcast stream out there. This will also be on YouTube. Check us out on interviewonafire.com. Travis, thank you from the bottom of my heart again, man. Uh, you be safe out there in the OC. And I will see you guys again, hopefully soon here in Dallas. And uh, we'll talk next time, buddy. Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. All right. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Later.
Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire Podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.